Stereoscopic Systems, Part 2. Now, in Part 1, we discussed uh, anaglyph uh, systems where you see different images in each eye using colored filters. But uh, modern uh, 3D films, instead of using colored filters, uh, tend to use uh, polarized filters. Now, uh, light waves are uh, transverse waves, and so they can have a polarization. And the direction of the polarization is the direction of the amplitude of the oscillation. So it could be uh, vertical oscillations or horizontal oscillations. And uh, polarizing filters take light that is a mix of polarizations of all different angles and filter them so that we have only one direction, uh, typically either a vertical or horizontal. Now here's an example where I have a couple of um, linear polarized filters. So you can see they're sort of grayish. You can see through um, the filters. Uh, you can still see through them, but then when I orient them, uh, perpendicular to each other. Uh, one of them is uh, vertical, the other here one of them is vertical, the other one's horizontal. Now they're both vertical. Uh, so when I have them both vertical or both horizontal, then both of them let through that type of polarized light. But when I have them perpendicular, one of them lets through only horizontal, the other one only lets through vertical, so uh, the combination doesn't let through anything. Uh, polarized uh, sunglasses are quite common in that uh, glare reflecting off of a horizontal surface is horizontally polarized, so if you block horizontal polarized light, then uh, you block uh, glare reflected off of horizontal surfaces. Uh, now the um, LEDs in a uh, liquid crystal display projector are also polarized. So here you see I'm holding just one of these filters and you can see right through. Um, now when I hold it in front of the light, uh, the shadow here is a green. Now the shadow is magenta, which is red and blue. Now it's green again. So the um, light from the uh, green uh, liquid crystals, uh, well, if passing through the green liquid crystals, is horizontally polarized, and the one passing through the red uh, pixels and the blue pixels is uh, vertically uh, polarized. Now, in modern 3D films, instead of using linear polarizers, it's more common to use uh, circular polarizing filters. Uh, one of the reasons is that the problem with linear uh, polarizing uh, filters for a 3D film is if you uh, tilt your head, then you're spoiling the angle of the polarization. Uh, with uh, the circular ones, you can have uh, clockwise and counterclockwise, or left and right uh, circular polarized, and uh, it doesn't matter whether you tilt your head or not. Uh, here's uh, an example of uh, the uh, mannequin is wearing some uh, circular polarized glasses and then we're going to take the second pair and put it in front of the camera and you see that uh, one eye goes dark and when I shift to the other lens uh, the other eye uh, goes dark. So this is uh, light passing through one of the circular polarizers, and then uh, the other one. So very similar to how the anaglyph uh, glasses worked, uh, but um, instead of being colored, it's uh, circular polarized. One thing which is uh, an interesting effect, which you should try with um, some uh, 3D glasses, is if you wear them and look in the mirror, uh, using the anaglyph glasses, if you close one eye, you'll uh, see your open eye uh, through the glasses, and the eye that's closed, that lens will look uh, black. If you repeat this with circular polarized glasses, 
uh, it will actually be the eye that's open, that lens will look black, and the eye that's closed, uh, that lens will look clear. So interestingly enough, you can uh, see through the lens even though its reflection looks black. Uh, this is because the mirror uh, inverts the circular polarization of the light. Um, a little confusing, but uh, try it and think about what's going on. It's pretty interesting. Now when you're uh, filming for polarized projection, uh, film, uh, regular film or digital recording uh, does not record polarization. So you uh, simply need to have two cameras to have two different views, but the polarization doesn't enter at this stage. Uh, what you then need to do when you project the film is either have dual projectors, uh, one with, uh, say, right polarized and the other one with left polarized filters and the corresponding ones for the people in the audience wearing the glasses. Problem with this system is the two projectors have to stay exactly synchronized. A uh, more modern technique is to have a single projector and the projector simply alternates uh, each frame either being the view for the right eye or the view for the left eye and it has a uh, digital uh, polarizer which switches the polarization from uh, left to right uh, with each frame corresponding to whether it's a frame that uh, should be seen by the left eye or by the right eye. Yet another system which uh, does not really use uh, polarization directly is uh, shutter glasses. So these shutter glasses actually uh, actively open and close uh, using an uh, active liquid crystal display which is actually in the glass glasses themselves. Uh, so the way uh, this works, and you can use a conventional uh, TV with this, that uh, you have a, a 3D uh, player that uh, puts up an image and sends a signal simultaneously telling the glasses uh, which eye should be uh, open for that uh, image. And then the next frame, uh, the next eye uh, opens up, uh, so forth. Uh, the advantage of this is the uh, TV itself doesn't have to uh, do any polarization itself. Uh, all of the switching of the view is done uh, actively by the uh, glasses themselves. Of course, uh, the best thing would be to not have to be wearing any kind of glasses at all. Uh, and those types of systems are called auto stereoscopic uh, displays. There's uh, two basic types. Uh, one of them is called lenticular overlay. So you have a set of lenses and uh, consecutive pixels have uh, different lenses that project the image either to the left eye or the right eye. A uh, similar system is parallax barrier where instead of lenses, you have a set of slits and uh, through those uh, parallel slits, either the right eye uh, sees one set of pixels or the left eye sees uh, the second set of pixels. Uh, this parallax barrier is how the uh, Nintendo 3DS uh, works. Another kind of uh, 3D effect that uh, works without glasses is if you have a display that has an accelerometer so that it detects motion. Uh, the uh, iPhone is um, like this. So uh, on the display, if you uh, move the phone itself, the icons uh, seem to move relative to the background as if uh, they are uh, closer to the viewer uh, than the background. So this gives you a sense of depth. Uh, but this uh, only occurs when you move the phone. If you uh, hold the phone still and move your head, you don't see any parallax and there's no um, 3D effect. Now the best type of 3D effect would be uh, from uh, true holograms uh, and these are made using interference patterns from multiple uh, laser sources. So 
uh, the best type of hologram uh, requires uh, active uh, lasers. Uh, there's also a simpler uh, type of hologram called uh, rainbow hologram, and you see those on uh, credit cards uh, or other types of anti-counterfeiting um, uh, devices. So, and with a true hologram, uh, when you rotate your view of the image, either by moving your head or moving the hologram itself, uh, in both cases, you can see around the image as, uh, as if it was a true 3D object. In uh, movies, they like to present holograms, but these are really just uh, composited uh, images, either uh, CG generated, as in this Iron Man, uh, or uh, the classic one from uh, Star Wars of Princess Leia. At uh, concerts, they've uh, created uh, these so-called holograms, but these are not true uh, holograms. The uh, What's actually done is have a uh, computer-generated image, which is projected onto a transparent uh, foil on stage, and uh, you have live performers uh, behind the foil, and then the um, so-called uh, holographic um, uh, performer um, projected onto the foil. Uh, there's actually no true parallax that occurs here, but since the audience members don't move very far and, and they're uh, far away from stage, uh, that isn't uh, noticeable. Uh, yet another type of uh, fake hologram can be done by using a pair of mirrors, um, as you see in this photo and as you see in this little clip. So um, that little pig is actually inside uh, the bowl, so I can put my finger right, right through him, and uh, because Although it's a very uh, convincing uh, image, uh, there's nothing actually there, physically there. So in uh, summary, uh, modern stereoscopic 3D films use polarized glasses. Uh, there are uh, linear polarizers, which, for example, a horizontally uh, polarized filter will block vertically polarized light and uh, vice versa. Uh, but films tend to use um, circular polarized filters, so something which is clockwise circular uh, polarized will block counterclockwise um, circular polarized light and vice versa. Shutter systems are another type of uh, stereoscopic 3D uh, glasses system, uh, which in the shutter system, the glasses actively open and close a shutter uh, on each frame of the film, depending on whether it's a left eye image or a right eye image. Auto stereoscopic displays are displays where you have a 3D effect uh, without the use of glasses, and the most common ones use uh, grids, such as the parallax barrier, or lenses, uh, such as the lenticular overlay. And then finally, uh, true holograms are made using interference patterns from multiple laser light sources. Uh, we don't often encounter uh, true holograms. Uh, we saw some examples of uh, fake holograms um, in those uh, last couple of slides.